Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options. And this is the morning market prep video for March 5th, 2020. What a great rally we had yesterday. The Biden win seemed to inspire the market here a little bit. The Biden win in uh, on Super Tuesday seemed to inspire the market here a bit. Really led by the healthcare sector, things started to rally. And then in the afternoon, it really started to catch on, pushing up substantially. But let's take a look at what ended up happening here. I'm going to go to some drawings that I have on the chart. And as you can see here, the Dow pushed up into price resistance here in the chart and unable to break through that and also still remaining below its 200 day moving average. So although very, very good um, to see that rally, unfortunately, we didn't get a whole lot accomplished here in the Dow. And if you've looked at the futures this morning, you're probably wondering why in the world did I even get up? This morning, we are looking at a gap down and we're right now, uh, Dow futures are showing a gap down of 470 points. They have been down as much as 600 points uh, this morning. And as earnings, you know, roll out, we might get a little bit of back and forth on that number. But certainly a brutal gap down this morning for anyone who held overnight. Pretty ugly um, a morning starting to shape up here this morning, taking back a good portion of yesterday's move. So, uh, you know, what do you do with that? Well, um, with this kind of volatility, like I've been mentioning, we've got to be really, really careful. And remember that it's okay to stand aside with this kind of volatility. Fighting a market like this with this kind of emotion can be extremely dangerous and extremely costly um, as you try to figure out what's going to happen next. And I don't think even the market knows what's going to happen next. And my major concern is as we start to slip toward the uncertainty of the weekend, we could even see this get worse. Um, one thing I really haven't felt that we have seen yet here is that complete capitulation in the market. And what that means is, uh, you know, we're right here at the beginning of this uncertainty here in the United States as that continues to spread. And as we move into that uncertain weekend, we could even see more uh, pushback in the market. So don't be surprised. A fairly typical price pattern that occurs is after we catch some kind of a rally, we uh, oftentimes retest lows. And if we haven't seen that capitulation here in the market yet, we could actually drift on lower. So keep that in mind, we may not be done with the selling yet and the panic um, that's surrounding this virus situation. So be really, really careful, guys, on how you approach this market. And, you know, a 450, 400 to 600 point gap down this morning should be that eye opener saying we can't count on anything overnight. And these big whips could be um, really, really punishing to those um, in the market. Let's take a look at the SPY, SPY. Now, the SPY did a better job um, yesterday and um, holding and, and recovering once again it's 200 day moving average. You can see we recovered it, we lost it, we recovered it. And now this morning, taking a substantial gap down here in the SPY, back down here toward a test of that 200 day moving average. Let's hope that holds. If it does hold, we may be okay, um, you know, for the next day or so. But if that fails once again, once I just want to remind that possibility that we may not be done with the selling here. And it's fairly typical um, to retest lows um, after a rally back. So keep that in mind here. Not looking very good just yet and still pushing up against uh, some price resistance in the chart. Not nearly a substantial price resistance that the Dow has, but certainly a price resistance up there to deal with. Let's take a look at the Q's. Q's, the strongest index out there, having held above its 200-day moving average and using that as a launching pad, pushing back up toward that 50-day moving average. Now, that 50-day moving average may just pull real hard to draw prices up toward that um, here eventually, but we're starting out this morning with this nasty gap down. So pretty substantial move back down here. 
if those bears grab onto that, continue to push, we could lose all of yesterday's gains pretty quickly, uh, pushing back down toward those lows. However, if those bulls do find some kind of inspiration in here, possibly they slip up here toward that 50-day moving average eventually. Just expect really wild whip, very high volatile uh, markets uh, for the for us to deal with. And then last but not least is this poor IWM. IWM um, really in a dire situation here overall. Um, well below its 200-day moving average. Notice its 500-day moving average is right there with it, providing quite a level of resistance and may soon cross down below. Um, so pretty pretty ugly um, situation here in this chart and as we rally back up we've got significant congestion right in here in price to provide some resistance to that upside and as you can see we're gapping down here substantially lower uh, this morning here on IWM as we're trying to struggle with what the impacts of these um, all these uh, virus um, issues coming around and, and it's just the uncertainty um, this may be an absolute overreaction by the market it's it's true it could be a complete overreaction by the market but the thing is we just don't know we don't know this may not be enough reaction in the market when we uh, start tallying up the substantial costs uh, and impacts to companies um, as this virus continues to spread uh, around the world and uh, across the United States. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX, surprisingly yesterday, I would have expected was such a big rally yesterday that we would have seen a much bigger pullback in the VIX. We didn't get that. And I made mention of that to the Right Way Options folks yesterday at the close. That might be a warning. And we're getting that this morning with that big gap down this morning that may pop us back up in here substantially. So watch that carefully vix the fear has not gone away even though we have seen um you know some value buyers and things like that trying to come in the fear has not gone away and i'm not sure we've seen that capitulation in the market just yet let's take a look at uh, t2122 it's the four week new high new low ratio and you can see we rallied substantially yesterday Get, finally getting out of this um, bullish reversal zone, popping back up in here. And as we move back up um, in the chart, you can see we, we do have a little bit of price resistance in this chart through this level. But um, this morning's gap down, I'm guessing, is going to pull us right back down into this area. We'll have to watch, wait, and see. But um, it, it all depends on whether or not those bears find that inspiration to push on further or if those bulls will fight hard enough to defend this big gap down could be an interesting day um and we have several things that could affect that today if if we take a look at um our earnings calendar today we have uh, jobless claims coming out here at 8.30 this morning. Uh, productivity and cost, factory orders, natural gas report. And then later on today, we have a Fed balance sheet. Notice we have three Fed speakers later on tonight. Unlikely we're going to learn anything new from them, but it's always wise to pay attention to them when they have something to say. Um, I don't know that we're going to start seeing any job problems filtering in just yet um, from the virus concerns. Um, numbers continue to hold up pretty strongly for the economy. But if we happen to catch that surprise number, um, the market could react pretty negatively to that. Keep in mind, uh, tomorrow morning, we have the biggest number of the week, and that's going to be that employment situation number. Um, so we'll want to keep a cl close eye on that for tomorrow morning. As I speak, we have uh, Dow futures trading a little bit lower now, down um, about 490 and continuing to bounce around pretty substantially here with big price swings really, really fast. Um, let's take a look um, on our earnings calendar. We have a big group of earnings today, about 230 companies reporting earnings, um, but not that many uh, that are particularly notable. Uh, one, 
that is certainly notable is Costco. Costco reporting today. Um, right now it's looking at a gap down. I can't tell you if that has anything to do with an earnings report or if that's just the market pulling back um, here this morning. But Costco lo indicating just a little bit lower this morning at the open. Um, ADT, ADT reporting today. No report there. You can see we just have a really wide bid ask spread here. Um, AOBC. AOBC will be, will be reporting today. No report here yet. Again, very wide bid ask spread uh, currently in the chart, suggesting that that is coming. Uh, BJ, BJ reporting this morning. Looks like BJ disappointing, gapping down here this morning. So we'll want to keep an eye on that. Burlington, Burlington reports today. No report on that yet that I can see. Well, maybe, maybe it has reported just a little bit lower here on that stock. Um, CHUY reporting today. Big wide bid ask spread. Whoops, that's not it. Typed the wrong symbol. Uh, big wide bid, bid ask spread here. No report on that yet, but something to keep an eye on. Um, H&R Block reporting today, big wide spread, no report there. KTB will be reporting. Um, we've got Fizz, Fizz reporting this morning. Um, Plug, Plug Power reporting today. We'll want to keep an eye on that. And uh, TTC is some of the notables that I wrote down. Um, certainly doesn't have to be all of the notables and looks like this hasn't reported yet either. So lots of companies reporting today could move the market around substantially and we'll want to keep an eye on that. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day. Um, I know it's a ch it's hard to say I want to wish you a great day when the market is acting like this because it's really not um, all that great a days uh, for a lot of folks. I know some folks that are very, very quick price action traders are making out like bandits right now. And because of the high volatility uh, for those day traders, and if you're a swing trader, position trader, uh, not so much fun right now because this is been very punishing price action and very very difficult to trade and honestly very very challenging even for experienced day traders because of the whip so with that everyone if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could do me a favor and click that subscribe button on youtube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you feel the video is worthy, if you feel that you picked up something in here that could help you focus on the day and uh, remove some of that emotion and realize that if we just focus on price action and technicals, we can do a better job with our trading, then do me a favor and click that thumbs up button and also um, leave a brief comment that helps me out a lot in um, continuing to have the channel grow and thank you so much for everyone who does that you guys are absolutely awesome truly truly appreciate it so with that let's take a look at some stocks that may be setting up and I want to remind everyone that anytime I post a stock in these videos it's not a recommendation to buy or sell any security but we'll want to keep an eye on that right now there's a ton of trades that are really setting up short lots of trades setting up short with this rally back so you're going to want to be very very careful here in the market um, some of those stocks um, well they're just all over the place where we have these big rally back up into resistance levels now coke might be one of those that is on the other side of this where we've got this extreme move back up and the stocks that i'm going to post this morning are those stocks that are in defensive sectors and they did very very well yesterday rallying back strongly from this sell-off so defensive sector stocks where we have a pretty substantial dividend yield is important if you look right here on my tc2000 i have it set up so i can see what um, the forward dividend yield is and these stocks are looking pretty 
pretty strong and dividend yielding stocks seem to be doing very, very well right now. So Coca-Cola might be one you want to put on your list. Uh, Kroger um, might be one you want to put on your list. Breaking out yesterday with lots and lots of strength going in and looks like it wants to stay up here this morning. Nice dividend paying stock. We're certainly going to need our grocery stores no matter what happens with the virus. So keep an eye on that looking very strong. Take a look at uh, stocks like Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly very strong. Again, that defensive type sector very strong. It looks like it's going to pull back this morning, but it's a dividend payer. Take a look at Hershey. Um, Hershey. Um, I guess everyone wants to have their chocolate uh, during um, any virus outbreak. And you can see staying very, very strong, rallying sharply back up, pushing up here toward price resistance levels, but a nice dividend payer. Take a look at like Philip Morris, big rally up, back up in Philip Morris, pushing this price resistance in the chart, big dividend payer. Everybody seems to be rushing back to those. You can also go over into telecommunications communications big rally back up in AT&T nice dividend payer 5.62 percent uh, Verizon um, making up making a, a, a big move back up pushing into some resistance but another one of those dividend payers um, Altria Mo picking up substantially here has to break its downtrend yet but an eight percent dividend yield seems pretty attractive to a lot of folks right now in an uncertain market so you might want to keep an eye on some of these uh some of these kind of stocks um a monster beverage big rally back up as you can see um and um in that defensive sector if you take a look at uh, pepsico PepsiCo had a nice move back up yesterday. Again, a nice divvy payer. So we're seeing that defensive sector, um, um, those stocks really come back up and stay strong. Walmart kind of surprised me yesterday, moving uh, back up, pushing into this resistance. Um, again, one of those big old defensive sector stocks where people are going to keep shopping. Um, so watch those things closely, guys. Those might be a few stocks that you can pay attention to um, for potential long trades if they start to settle down. Um, and I can't say that they will um, settle down. There is a lot of back and forth and a lot of danger um, in these stocks. Take a look at Shopify. Shopify moving back up, breaking back through resistance. A rest or hold in here might be an option opportunity for a trade. So we're seeing a few select stocks moving uh, moving up, but we're still having trouble in a lot of different places. Take a look at Microsoft. Although it did rally just a little bit um, yesterday, still struggling up here. Um, Amazon struggling um, in, in this area and gapping substantially lower this morning. Um, so we have some areas that are very, very strong, some areas that are going to be feeling these effects, uh, strongly feeling these effects of the virus and um, um, being priced um, as a result of that uh, lower. So be really, really careful, guys, as you move forward. Remember, the volatility of this market is extremely strong, and it is going to likely stay that way. As a matter of fact, it could increase in its volatility as we head into the weekend. Just that uncertainty, not knowing what comes next, um, really affects the market. So keep that in mind. Also remember, um, you know, as challenging as this market is, and I know it feels like, hey, I got up today, I need to get in here and, and get in here and start pitching and fighting in the market. But the truth of the matter is, guys, if you're not um, at the experience level to be able to deal with this, the better thing that you can do is just stand aside and protect your capital. Wait for this to settle down. It will settle down eventually. When? I don't know. But it will settle down eventually and there will be great opportunities in the market. When this selling and uh, wild volatility is over, there will be great trades to pick up because they've been um, oversold um, in this process. So keep that in mind. It's okay to stand aside and there's no shame in just protecting your capital in this kind of volatile condition.
So as I bring this video to, to a close, um, Dow futures are now down 500 points. And as we continue to whip around here, um, anything is possible. So be very, very careful and decide um, if you do get in the market, how much risk you're willing to take and, um, and maybe pare back those positions considerably because of the whip. Any option trading is also very dangerous. Bid ask spreads have widened up substantially. Implied volatility has raised the extrinsic value of options substantially, making them very, very dangerous to trade. So be really careful out there, guys. I don't want to see folks just, uh, you know, throwing all of those great returns that they had um, over the last few years, just giving them back to the market, trying to fight um, in this high volatile um, environment. So with that, everyone, have a great day. I want to wish you all the best. And we'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Have a good one, y'all.